We are off to rescue a Sapphire Cosworth. Right, here she is, fellas. This is my first time seeing the car. Prior to this, all I've seen is a couple of pictures on my phone. The first thing we'll do, we'll check it's a genuine cosy. Oh, it's locked. I believe the keys are up here somewhere. There we go. Check the floor numbers. Right, so what I'm doing here is I'm checking the floor numbers on the car. Match the VIN tag under the bonnet. I'm checking the VIN tag, it doesn't look like it's been tampered with. And I'm checking the numbers all match to the V5 document with the car. He did say he took the dump valve off, but it looks like it's got a big RS500 intercooler on there. Oh, need some work, need some work, fellas. Let's have a look. Right, let's fire it up, check it in you will. Key in. Check the smoke. I'm going to use the car's floor mat to keep my clothes clean. I've got to get back in the car after this. Right, so when I'm under the car, I'm checking all the usual places for rust. With the cars being that old though, there's literally anywhere I could rust now. A lot of what you see as well is a mixture of mud underneath. It's really dirty. Like I say, it's had a life on a farm. So a good clean will have the underneath looking a lot better. But if I keep the car, we will refurbish it underneath. Need some work. Like it looks, it looks bad, right? But if we open the door, like in there, it looks minging, doesn't it? But it just needs like a good, good wash over. It's sat for like years and years just outside the lad's house. It should have cloth interior, so this interior will change this. We'll put some leather in. You can see it's got a brand new headlining. Just a little bit something. Like there's a little button on the handbrake and give that a good dust down. But there's absolute piles of history with the car. Piles. We've got new ABS sensors there. Oil and filter. There's a boot lock. Uh, the side skirts are off and they're over, over here by the caravan. Say that like you need a door card. But like I say, it's the wrong interior. We'll change that. We'll get the wheels done. Put the stripes down the side. So it's like a little bit like that out. Get it all lined up. Just need a bit of love. Got the 4 before bonnet on it. I'll show you under the engine. Let's have a look. You can see there, it's got the RS500 intercooler. Like tank, we'll change the tank, we'll put a clay pot of tank on it. We'll get like the rubber for along the back there. It's just loads of little bits, just bits. You can see the lad who owns it had some problems with the fans, so he's put an aftermarket fan loom on. But they're all rusty and it's pretty solid, it's solid. Like, oh, they always go on these inner wings. But it's mint, mint. Absolutely mint. The brakes are a bit soft, I need to look into the brakes. But I mean, look at man, it's a soft cosy in white. Two wheel drive. Get some badges on the back there, get some new reg plates, clean the exhaust. 
there's a lad coming up with a recovery truck so i'll catch up with you when he gets there i've got like a two hour wait three hour wait You can see under the bonnet here, fellas, just absolute full of dust and grime and dirt. See, something's been eating my handbrake button as well. There's the bits what it's chewed off. Hi, mate. Morning, Adam. <laughs> It's your undercarriage cleaner. Right. Go and press it, see what. We'll just hoover up the thick of this dirt first, then we'll get some part of cleaner on it. See if we can uh, spruce this up a bit, because as you see, it is minging. We've pulled the car in the garage, we've dried it off. Dan's came back round with his polishing gear. So what's the plans, Dan? Right, firstly, washing it didn't do much because all the dirt is literally uh -huh. stuck inside. In. Uh, so we're going to get the whole car clear barred sort of bottom. Uh -huh. uh, and then I've got a whole lineup of machine, co uh, machine polishers. I've got different compounds. I've got root air, different pads, all by roots. Give it a go, see what it comes up like. Cool. What compound are you using there? That is uh, Roop's uh, coarse compound. Coarse? It's a coarse, uh, it's like the, that's going to lift most of the shite off. But uh -huh. it's only using a sort of a yellow Roop's pad, but it's one of the new, like lamb's wool, like one of the new wool ones. Right. Made the colour as well, the colour difference. They take the tape off for 50 50. All right. It obviously needs a finish and polish and machine over the top of it, but that, you ready? Aye. Right. So you're going to give it another one with a lighter one? Or oh, I have to then. Once it's all done, once uh -huh. the whole car's done, they're doing again. But... Honestly, I didn't think the paint was as bad till you've done that. <laughs> I'm about to remove that, mate. Looks like a base model Sierra without the spoiler on. Right, it's 
two screws. One thing on Sierras that always lets it down when you open the door. When you open the door on a Sierra, you always see these brackets and they always look minging and rusty. So we're going to take it out and clean it. Because as well, if you look here on the seat, it's kind of, they always collapse as well, the seats. So we'll fix that as well. And like you see the brackets there, it just looks minging. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this seat out and we'll hopefully get the look a bit better. Right, with the seat now, you can see why it's sagging. See this bit here? This should be joined to there. So all the kind, all the stuffing just falls out the bottom. That should be pulled tight. Do you know what I mean? I've got a replacement one of these, but we'll take this bracket off, we'll clean it all up, and we'll fix this seat up. So here it is before, as you can see, fellas, just absolutely minging. We're going to give it a good clean. We'll uh, blast it. Well, first we're going to jet wash it, then we'll blast it, then we'll paint it, and we'll have a looking good. Right fellas, I've blasted and cleaned the subframe of this seat. There's still a handle missing, there's a handle goes on there. For the height adjustment on the seat, that's still in my paint boot. Before we fit, refit that subframe, we need to change this. This is like the base of the seat. That's what I showed you earlier. It kind of kind of keeps your bum off the floor. I've got this replacement. Bought this on eBay, it was like 25 quid. So we'll fit this. Then we'll refit the subframe, then we'll refit it all into the car. So all I need to do is first remove these hooks off the base, like that, they come out. We'll take the metal bars out of this, take these little ones out first, we'll take these little side hooks out. See them, they just pop out, kind of twist and push and fiddle them and they've just come out fairly easy. Um, take them out there, then this should hopefully pull out. Them out. I have to get the old standing knife on this. Then the new one that should just slide in there. Then we'll just pop these clips back on. That should just clip on the bar, like that. Now, let's get this onto here. Now we need to stretch these over onto this side. I'm gonna use a flathead screwdriver and I've cut a little notch in to what they recommended on the EBA advert. So I'm just gonna hoop it on the screwdriver like that. Push it across. Oh, I found that was easy peasy. Two, three. Makes the seat look a lot better as well. It was look tatty before. I mean, it's too underneath the seat, so it doesn't really matter too much. But it does does look better, nice and flat. That. What we'll do now is we'll get this frame on while my handle dries in the paint booth. And I'm sure you'll agree that looks a lot better than when it was all rusty and horrible. Thank <laughs> you. 
if you look along the side of the car, there should be like a, like a molding along the side. Obviously that's missing. Well, I've got some over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to try, I've never done it before. We're going to try and figure it out and get them fitted. Hopefully they go on straight. Apparently it's quite hard. I think it's on this bit of wood just to keep them straight so they don't bend when obviously they're in the, in the mail on the way getting delivered from Royal Mail. So here's the strips. There's six parts, two doors and a front wing. You can see right on the door, the original door strips like go in these square holes so you don't need to worry about lining them up. But obviously these ones, these have got just double sided tape on. So I'm going to need to spend a bit more time figuring out and getting them straight. I'm going to go just above the, the line, the, the swage line. But pull this out. Got spirit level. I'm not bothered about being level, more straight. Anyway, I've just got some degreaser slash panel wipe just to get all the all the stuff off the door, just so they stick good, do you know what I mean? So we'll put some of this on a cloth. There we go, a bit of that. Then I'm gonna like slide it down. It sits on that bit of tape. I've done it. I've done it. Doesn't catch on the door there. Take this tape off. What are you eating? As you can see, the strip's on, and I think it looks a lot better. And I think I've made a kind of job, to be honest, honestly. It's straight, it doesn't wave, it looks good. I'm happy with it. But you know what I need to change next? These. These should not be white, uh, they should be amber. So we'll put that under there. Oh, it does, oh, it's a bit baggy like. We'll take this little rubber washer off this new bit and pour it on this old bit. Hopefully that'll sort the bagginess out. Ah, oh, that fades better. That was an easy fix. Then that should go into there. Turn. There we go. We've got some uh, trim for the front bumper, what we're going to fit. But well, first thing we need to do is, we need to remove the old sticky stuff that's still on the front bumper. So this is the last bit of sticky tape off the bit of trim that was here before. I'm literally just trying to pull it off and all I'm getting is like, maybe it's a quarter, a half inch of tape at a time. It took me about an hour to get all this bit of tape off. Once I got the tape off, I give it a clean with some tape cut just to clean the paintwork up so it looks nice when we put the new trim on. Once I'd finished with the tape cut, I give it a clean down with some panel wipe just to give the like the, the fresh tape a good a good base to stick to. So hopefully it won't come off. Right fellas, I'm sure you'll agree, that looks a lot better with the black strip on, but you see this bit that's black, that should be silver. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna whip these out, just one Phillips screw, and we'll, uh, we'll sand them back, and then we'll give them a flash over with some paint. Mm. 
later. I've brought them in my paint booth and we'll, I'll give them a quick rub down with some degreaser. We're going to give them a quick flash over with a silver paint and we'll give them a quarter of lacquer. Light dust them. See these little prong things? There's kind of little cut cutouts on the bumper. So that sits in there. Oh, there, we go. there we go. We've got a new screw here, just a tiny little one. Hopefully this will hold it in. So we'll put that in there. There we go, that should do it. It looks a lot better, doesn't it, with these silver than black. Right, so that goes on there. See these, these are chrome, these shouldn't be chrome. So I got these off eBay, these are genuine Ford parts. And they're just the caps, they just basically replace them Mackie Chrome ones that are on the car. Now the last chrome bit I want to change under the bonnet is this header tank. It hasn't even got any antifreeze in there, has it? That's just pure water. I've rubbed all this down, so what we're going to do is, we'll take this cap off, right? What we're going to do is, we're going to mask up some bits, then we'll give it a wipe down with some panel wipe, and we'll give it a good coat of some matte black paint. Right, so we've got a couple of bits to mask up. We're going to mask these up. Not all the way down, but... Not going all the way down to the bottom, but just up a bit, so when the pipe's on, it'll look black, but the pipe isn't gripping on the paint, if that makes sense. It does to me, it does to me. Okay, another bit, that bit will go on there. That bit there. And we'll wrap that round there. Cover the hole up so we don't get tape in, in the bottle. Then we'll mask this thread up. Right, we'll get some panel wipe, we'll give it a full wipe down, we'll give it a light dusting of some matte black. Right, then we'll go and put this up in my spray booth and we'll give it a good coat of matte black. A really light coating for the first one, a really light dusting. We've painted it and it looks, honestly it looks a lot better than I thought. So what we're going to do is, we'll take this tape off and we'll fit it on the car. Right, let's put it on. Carefully not to scratch anything. Right, I've just quickly fired it up just to just to check if it needs work and check there's no leaks. She makes that smile, yeah, she's got that style that makes you think she's made out of gold. Just turning up the volume on the radio.
give them a good firm press on so hopefully they won't fall off later on. So from the bottom of this badge which is going to go there and the top of that Cosworth badge there should be a 5mm gap. So I've got a 5mm Allen key, I'm going to rest it there like that, then I'm going to plonk that badge on top. There we have it fellas, I'm sure you'll agree that looks a lot better. One thing that's still letting the car down is this standard steering wheel. You can see it's all tatty at the top, it's just a bit worn. Oh Jesus Christ. Oh Jesus, look off man. Next we'll get a sock red for that nut. That one off. This is a nice steering wheel. This then that goes on straight like that. Then we'll put this nut back on. Then we'll plug this horn on. That goes under to there. I'll just check that. Yep, that goes under there. Then that goes onto. Shut up, man. Give our. Like that. Spin that over. Oh, give our man. Knock you up. Off. Off. Shit off, man. Off. There we go. There we go. There we go. That looks a lot better than that tatty original one. Try this bolt that's a further under. The fuel tank is held up with three bolts and none of them came out. So what I ended up doing was getting a hacksaw and cutting through this rear strap that yes. holds the tank up. Is that out the way? There's one. When it did fall, I fell on my foot. Ah. Yes. Now if we slap in this, it should just all come away. Got a little bit of fuel leaking out there, but that's not a big deal. There we go. That's a fuel filter.
Come on. Oh, it's coming off. Nearly there. There we go. There we go. When I'm welding here, I'm just doing little tacks and I'm joining each new tack to the old tack so I'm kind of stacking them on top of each other.
This looks like the front one. When I was taking old suspension off a car, I would sell it on, get get 100 quid or 200 quid back. But I think this set of suspension is far past its best. So the only place this is going is straight in the bin. Yes. 